Hey guys, this is another Archaics Deep Dive. I have provided historical examples of phenomena generated from the sky. It just doesn't fit our modern interpretation of reality. Many of you have seen those videos, but the immense amount of data, the anomalies, the enigmas, the genuine mysteries from both the contemporary and the ancient world, I have concluded that what we live under is a sky sim, a holographic field that conceals what is truly above our world. I offer this video as a series of discoveries that clearly reveals that our world is not what you think. As many of you know, the perfect mathematical construct of the 138 year Phoenix phenomenon over so many millennia is what led me to really question nature. That there is a cleverly disguised mechanical aspect governing over seemingly random phenomena, providing us the illusion of natural order and not, not a controlled one. I am not the first to suspect this. On the cover of one of my prior videos about machines in the sky, as you see here, it's a famous woodcut that appeared in Flammarion's book for the very first time in the year 1888. Now, it is admitted that no one knows the origin of this woodcut. This was just the first time that it was published in a book that we have a record of. So, let's look closer at this piece and see what it's conveying. It is clear the artist understood that the sun, moon, and stars were inside the vault of the sky and that this sky totally hid what was actually present beyond. For the 1800s, the artist did a good job of conveying a very mechanical beyond the sky uh, scene. Smoke, fire, other gigantic glowing objects like the sun and moon, but different. The man in the woodcut is peering through the illusory sky at what lies beyond. And the most curious detail in the realm above the sky is the wheel within a wheel. Wheels from ancient times were associated with mechanical devices. For this reason, when mysterious constructions were seen in the skies long ago, they were referred to as flying chariots, which are wheeled constructions. They merely employed frames of reference available to them. In other presentations, I show that super constructions have been described by eyewitnesses in history. Over a century ago, Charles Fort wrote that super constructions appeared in our skies every once in a while, and he even theorized that some may be inhabited or they may be derelict, still carrying out the functions or a program designed by an ancient race that may no longer exist. Fort was certainly before his time. There appeared to be instances when the sky sim failed and the loss of power weakened the holo field, allowing people to see constructions in the sky that had been previously hidden. In the year 1561, then in 1566, both of them over Nuremberg and Basel, Europe. Again, 1752, I have a whole video about the appearance of a glowing octagonal object and the phenomena that it created both in the sky and on the ground. In this Nuremberg picture, the great black spear appears to be a gigantic vessel, and the sun appears weakened as objects appeared all around it, or maybe through it. A bladed track appears behind the sun. It's so, so bizarre. And the sky is filled not with mere globular objects, but long rods and giant pipes with lights and spindles, as well as flying crosses. For a while, a gigantic object appeared near the sun and had its own corona. In the Old Testament, this wheel-within-a-wheel -wheel phenomenon in the sky is recorded in the book of Ezekiel. In chapter 1, verse 16, we read very clearly, as for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of beryl, and the four had the same likeness. Their appearance and construction being, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. This, if true, happened over 25 centuries ago. And again, the wheel is a reference, is a frame of reference. The best approximation 
that the eyewitness could contrive for the time period. A short time ago, an archaic subscriber named Dennis sent me an account I had never seen before, which is not uncommon. I mean, no one has read all the historical records there are, and no one could. But in this, in this 1764 article, A Phoenix Year, that we find, we find this account, and it reads, a true and wonderful narrative of two entire particular phenomena which were seen in the sky in Germany, Philadelphia, in 1764. This is what the article says. This was a Phoenix year. We hear with the greatest astonishment that near Riga in Livonia, Livonia has been seen the open sky, a fiery rod which struck about it, and the points of the rod were full of blood. Four great swords stood in the starry heaven, which very often vanished, and soon appeared again, then did strike together like flashes of fire round a house, and it was very frightful to behold. Likewise was to be seen with horror a pretty large coffin in the sky, which was covered with three dead heads, also a pyramid and a serpent. These are the forebodings of the Creator which go before punishment. A sky-born youth in white, pro in white proclaimed to the multitude near Riga amid the thunderous lightning and apparitions of swords and snakes and skulls in the, in the town of Kirschberg, outside Dansk, a three-day sail from Riga along the Baltic southern shore. Similar vengeful scenes were also reported in the skies. For a full 48 hours, the tempest fiery red clouds alternately closed and then opened and revealed a cannon and swords in the sky, along with three angels enjoining citizens to quit their vice and unrighteousness, or God will punish you very quick. So opens the first two accounts detailing unusual phenomena. I, it's hard to make, make anything out of that, but these were seen in the skies over, over is Riga or Riga? Kirschberg near Dansk in the month of May of 1763. So, it was published in Mannheim, born Philadelphia, by a man named Anton Armbruster, or Armbruster, uh, the following year. Again, these serpents, pyramids, heads, coffins, they're all just frames of reference. When people witness unfamiliar objects, the pattern recognition faculty of the human mind instantly tries to associate what is seen with what is known. It wasn't a coffin, but an immense superconstruction, not an hourglass or a wheeled cannon. In more ancient times, it would have been described as a wheeled chariot. We have, we have here a weakening of the sky sim, which allows for observers to see what has been there all along. These staves, pipes, pillars, swords in the sky, they are all a part of a vast apparatus. In 1346 and 1347, they were described as giant cigar-shaped vessels in the sky that spread the plague that killed one-third of the race, known as the Great Black Death, as I revealed in this video here. Modern interpretation has every object in the sky described anciently as a sword to be a comet, and this is patently untrue. Here is a picture of the sun being sickened, injured, having a black eye as a comet appears on one part of the sky and a sword appears in the other. Remember the giant black spear that, that, that hovered over Nuremberg. It could very well have been described as a sword. Now here's a woodcut from the year 1687. What do you see? On the left, there is a skull in the sky. On the right, there is an arc or a coffin, and between them is a comet. And here is a 16th century woodcut depicting something in the sky in the year 1479 over Basel, Switzerland. Today we are told it's a comet, but does it look like a comet? Or does it look as though the artist was attempting to show a superconstruction half visible, excuse me, as if partially obscured by maybe something in the sky or the sky sim itself? Who knows? But it doesn't look like a comet to me. 
The idea that chariots were in the sky was simply the acceptance of an unknown mechanical aspect to sky phenomena. A Nuremberg woodcut from the year 1504, it shows clearly that the sky is a star-filled vault and that the zodiac ring is inclined to the ecliptic and is also inside the vault. This explains the common theme of astrolabs centuries ago actually depicted as a wheel within a wheel. Look at these examples. It is instantly noticeable that our world is displayed at the very center and small with wheels within wheels providing an outer construct from which all visible phenomena was perceived. Stars, constellations, a sun and moon. Remember, guys, I've explained over and over that we are in the simulacrum. We are in the center of it. And the further we look out from the center at everything, it provides for us a beautiful sky full of a cosmos. But it's all, the, it's all a hollow field on the inside of a construct. We're not actually seeing beyond whatever the shell is, the Dyson, Dyson sphere-like shell construct that we're contained in. This seems to be the idea conveyed in old art. In the year 1503, Urania would cut the construct was overseen right here by the goddess. In 1559, Cunningham version, it was Atlas that supported the construct. And in the 1596 engraving depicting Kepler's Platonic universe, we find the construct is made of geometrical dimensions surrounding our world. Maybe it was the 1763 constructions that appeared in the sky that prompted this painting from the year 1763 in Germany. I don't know, but the imagery is of angels, light, a construction at the top, and a horn. horn horns, they're associated to flying constructions, and they are found also in this, in this 1618 artwork from Germany. Remember, too, the phoenix phenomenon is accompanied by a horn blast sound. And in the apocalypse, it is horns that issue in a lot of the judgments against the, the, the condemned. So it appears that there has long been the idea that the sun and the moon were not the only objects in the sky. That there, are something, there was something else, something hidden. It has been the subject of over 50 of my own videos and three published books to show you that this hidden object in our sky is a super construction and that it has always been referred to as the Sky Dragon, the Typhon, Fenrir, the Fink, Knopf, and Phoenix, the Thunderbird. Also, it is specifically attached to the idea of the pyramid. Look at this artwork. A very mechanical sky with a pyramid in the center and two birds in the sky, but not in the, in the central field. On the right is, a, is Aquila, or the eagle, and on the left is the phoenix. Phoenix is written clear enough to read. Below are a man and woman, naked, leaving the garden and the tree of life, or Axis Mundi. And in the beginning, it was the appearance of the fiery flaming sword, or the phoenix in the year 3895 BC, that ended a prior world so completely that the few survivors thought it was a new heavens and a new earth. Therefore, Genesis has it as a creation account. But those who do a deep dive into the, into the text of Genesis can easily see that it's a recreation. Mankind was told to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. This is supposed to be the creation event. The eagle, the eagle is the symbol of rulership. It would be balanced with the phoenix, which is the, it's the symbol of destruction and rebirth. As mankind moves through the dolmen portal seen below with their ultimate destination being the great pyramid as seen above the dolmen in the geometry. Until mankind is ready, the forces of the eagle, which are the rulers of this world, and the, and the phoenix would maintain balance. My videos in the Lost Secrets of Giza playlist explain everything mentioned here. This, this one illustration is very telling. In fact, this is not an isolated piece of imagined or, or, or an imagined interpretation. Look at this mechanical looking representation of sky phenomena of sun, stars, and moon, constellations with a pyramid in the center. At the bottom right, the devil is tempting Eve, who holds the moon. 
From this union of Baphomet and the goddess came Aquila, or the eagle, or the rulership of the world. On the far left is man, Adam, representing the Adamu, or mankind, who is watched over by the phoenix. You, you clearly read the word phoenix and see the bird below him. Both mankind and the elite are seen in this depiction chained to the wheels of the sky. The phoenix and the pyramid being key to understanding the operation of the construct and decoding history was known centuries ago, disguised by the elite in the alchemical traditions. This 1718 copper plate piece shows that the phoenix held a prominent place in the sky with the sun and moon. Notice the pyramid in the ground. And in my prior video about the octagonal star of 1752, I demonstrated that it was mathematically linked to other phoenix phenomenon dates. And in this 1752 uh, AD art by an unknown al alchemist, we again find the phoenix as a body in the sky with the sun and moon. And look at this artwork. The phoenix is prominent again and hidden behind the stars. In this old alchemical illustration, what do you see here? I see the blindness of mankind represented at the bottom. But truth can be found in the rabbit hole. See the rabbits and the man at the hole at the bottom? Why is truth found in the underground? This picture shows that knowledge and architecture and people are preserved underground. How much, how many times have I told you guys on my channel showing you different pieces of evidence that libraries and artifacts and inventions and concepts are preserved in underground facilities and after Phoenix resets, they're brought back up to the surface? How many times have I shown that? How many times have I theorized that or produced evidence of that? Here it is in a picture. So, this building with people in it is underneath the mountain, and they are under the phoenix. These are the elite. In this Freemason art, we see that there is a third object recognized in the sky and symbolized as the triangle or pyramid with an eye. I have shown this to be the phoenix. And for any who would contend this, who disbelieve or think that it's creative license, I offer the following. Check out this illustration, showing Freemason ideas came from the older alchemical treatises. In this piece, we see the eye in the triangle watching over mankind is in fact the phoenix. And this leads us to a better understanding of the Great Seal of the United States, the Great Pyramid, and the Eye. And remember, I have explained in my books and videos, the U.S. government quietly changed the Great Seal of the United States from the Phoenix to the Eagle in the year 1902, which was a Phoenix year. It's 138 years to the year 2040. I've shown, this, I've shown you guys this many times. And this was done because the elite understand. They understood in 1902 they had 138 more years before the Phoenix would seek them out. They had been given a pass for many centuries. But they know in 2040 the beginning of the end of their dominion will unfold. This isn't YouTube's video. It's my video. Listen, guys, I try to put a video out every other day, either a live video or an upload, and these take time. So dignify it with a super thanks. Dignify it with a like, with a share. Tell people about archaics, what you're learning here. And you can always buy me a coffee. You can also help me by helping my haters give them something else to complain about.